tonight, and both teams uh, taking a game. That's why we, why we are in the third and final game. And uh, it is official. Solaire Club did defeat Undercover Haunt Agents two games to nothing. So Solaire Club will be the seventh team, and now we need to figure out the eighth and final team will be the winner of this game right here between these two guys. And, uh, of course, I'm talking about for the Dead Eye Bounty League, $20,000 prize pool on the line starting this coming week here where it will be weekday matches on Tuesdays and Thursdays, at least for the initial stage. Best of fives where every single game there's money on the line. Anyways, more information will be coming out on all that. The portal and everything going to be launched tomorrow. So definitely, 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 definitely look for that. But uh, – we're finding out which team is going to be qualifying for the final spot, and here we go. The draft picking up. Of course, joined by Snoopy once again as my co-caster. And we got the initial bands here, Warby, Swiftblade, Ophelia, and Behemoth. Midas first pick coming out, followed by Parasite, Pebbles into Pyromancer. That's where things are going. You can tell so. that the SBN already liked what uh, happened last game. I mean, they're picking up the Pyromancer and the Parasite just as last game. Yeah. Let's yeah. see if uh, Legion team is more prepared to deal with it this time. I'm pretty sure they are. You know, uh, Insania was actually uh, pointing out in chat that apparently Pinky Curdy is known for going Assassin Shroud Parasite in like uh, in other games. So I, I guess maybe it is a typical thing for the guy. It is Insania after all. I mean, maybe he's trolling too, but uh, <laughs> you never know with that guy. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, oh my god, at that, look at yeah. this! It's the same draft all over <laughs> again. I mean. uh, they can't get Swift played though, but <laughs> true. Other than that, it's pretty similar, and they are right-clicking Monkey King, and you know it's you gotta wonder if uh, if uh, Team Grief is gonna maybe pick up on that thing, like okay, they still need a Pee Wee here. Oh, should we actually ban the Monkey King here or not? It's been a long time since we've seen a Monkey King, man. <laughs> True, especially um, a good one. Uh, normally, I would say that Monkey King is not the best hero versus Midas and Pebbles, but I I know for a fact that Sync has been running. Uh, Monkey King at times versus a Pebbles and being successful with it. So, I mean, it's definitely possible if you know what you're doing because stalagmites can be tricky to hit versus a uh, Monkey King that's flying around. Yeah, that's true. With, oh, I don't know though if they dare to. I mean, this is a very important game for both teams and like DSPN, I mean, sure, they are feeling the confidence from last games, but I don't know, man. If it's a <laughs> Monkey King, I'm going to go all YOLO at least. It's... You know what? Again, they're drafting the exact same lineup, and and if they want to go for the same style, I feel like Monkey King will be a great option for that. Honestly, it's is he has carry presence, but also he can get very involved early on in the game, and that's what the Swift played really portrayed last game. So I really wouldn't yeah. put it out of the question here. Yeah, from, I would uh, really GSP, not like but... them to repeat the offensive tri lane though, or the offensive pseudo tri lane because that was not really a hit. Uh, it did work out a little bit, but I mean, Moraxis was suffering big time, and the Hellboy team had the advantage. I think they like kind of let their guard down a little bit after that, um, after seeing that the Magnus and Shipper were you know dominating the early game, and then it came back to bite him in the ass when they gave Moraxis that pull key and Swift played his pull key especially. But if they like if they do it again, I think that the Legion team is going to be uh, like way better prepared for it. They're going to go for the sauces. Of as well, I mean, that feels a little bit odd to me. I mean, Moraxis is very tanky and he's most likely going to be positioned in the mid. He got the Arcane Shield on top of that, so Sauce's shards is not necessarily the best. Yeah. Uh, tricky, tricky, tricky pickup that Sauce is. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Especially versus Parasite as it, well. You exactly. Know? That, that's what I was getting at. And you got to wonder, I mean, what. But at the same time, like, what would have been. Like, they can't go Cthulhu Fun, obviously. You know, he's banned out here, so. If they wanted a jungler, I mean, what uh, what other options would have been good here? They, you don't usually want to go a Tempest, I don't think, against, but at the same time, that still could be good. I don't know. Legionnaire is uh, yeah, a better option in general, I feel. I mean, they're not going to be able to run successful ganks and Moraxis in the mid with the Solstice. So it's going to be transitioning more to like a little bit of a late game or a mid to late game with that pull cave, perhaps, uh, together with the Pebbles and Rhapsody and Midas. I mean, you can go for a pretty like free pull key timing more or less and just put a lot of pressure but I think that's I think that Legionnaire might have been uh, the better choice because then they would have something to fall back to in late game as well if the pull key timings were to uh, fail well we'll see how they make it work here fine uh, gonna be the one playing it I'm sure he is their jungle player and definitely a great jungle player at that but yeah, we'll see uh, if that strategy pays off for them or not you can tell they're thinking a lot about this I don't actually have the time unfortunately on my 
thing. It's bugged out. Oh, but... my gosh. Okay. I had to double check to see if that was random or not, and it was actually selected. So, Emerald freaking Warden coming out here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We've not oh seen Emerald Warden God. yet. It was the same thing with uh, – who did we see yesterday? That was the same deal. It was freaking uh, – it was in Hammers. It was Gravekeeper, yeah. Oh, yeah. That ended up working out very well, but I mean, this is not the same kind of position as the Swift played last game, at least, or the same role as the Monkey King. So, huh? Are but, they looking to pick up Monkey King as well? well I don't remember. What see, that, that, that's the thing, though. Is that going to be Peewee's hero, or are they going to run that as more of a? I really feel like it's going to be know. Peewee's hero. Like I, I well, it's can. not. It's not a suicide. So yeah, they, they need a suicide still, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, unless they're going for a pseudo trial uh, again, but I mean that did not work out. I don't, I'm not sure if they really feel like that was a good option last game because I felt like it was a mistake. Let's go big bubbles time. here. Let's go. I mean, they had, that would make four to the five the same. <laughs> it worked out pretty well, and bubbles is always a pretty sound option. So I would like to see some physical damage. I don't think Emerald Warren is going to be able to provide that until later stages into the game. So far, they have Moraxis, Pyro Monster, and Parasite with a lot of magic damage. I would like to see some physical damage. Someone that can like potentially pick up a PKB on top of that Emerald Warden. Yeah, I had to double check his Q. I thought for some reason it might have been physical damage, but no, it is magic damage on the silencing shot. Um, but yeah, let's talk about that for a second. I mean, Emerald Warden as a hero. As Okay, they're going to go chipper themselves. Interesting. So, <laughs> a suicide All chipper, right. I guess? Or... Or so, mm. solo chipper, I guess they could run the aggressive suit of trial in and then he's super yeah, I guess top here. I think that is going to be the case. Like, I don't see anything else. Uh, yeah. You can't really run a uh, suicide chipper, not versus a solstice, that's impossible. Um, or, I mean, they, they can, of course, rocket the solstice coming, charging at you, but I mean, if you're stun locked by a Rhapsody or something at the same time, no, I just don't see it happening. Uh, I like the Valk, or I mean, the Valk pickup, though. That's like what I find curious as well, because that's most likely going to be a safe lane Valk and a Midas Suicide with the Pebbles Rhapsody in the mid lane in that case. So this is going to come down to the mid lane if the Maraxxus Empire Monster ends up going uh, to or dual lane in the mid. Yeah, no, Haxorin is playing the Valkyrie here, so that's definitely going to be a short lane Valkyrie. It looks like here indeed, so... Um. Again, the case of the carry Valkyrie. But again, going back to Ember Warden. Now, that silencing shot, very strong ability. You know, I was talking about earlier about Bloodhunter with his blood craze and how it lasts nine seconds. Uh, silencing shot, not as long, but it's five seconds. And it's a pretty short cooldown, too, I believe. Yeah, ten-second cooldown. I mean, it's so – every five seconds of downtime in between when he can use it again to throw up. Not only does it do the silence, obviously, on top of that, but it also does the, uh, the uh, damage. And it's actually quite a bit because it scales. Um – into into the game, so uh, very strong tool. The traps are very effective for certain reasons, not only for scouting, but chasing people down, getting away, but also for blocking camps. Uh, on top of that, it's another oh yeah effectiveness of it. So, and I wonder if they're gonna try to take advantage of that early on. Maybe like if he goes traps first and blocks a camp or that two of Solstice. Could be an idea. Yeah, I think that they got the upper hand in level one. They should at least. Yeah, I think they do. So they could potentially go into the enemy forest and uh, put some wards up it's and yeah, time. even a trap of that overgrowth. But, I mean, Shipper got the marchers first. This could indicate that he is uh, running for the suicide. He sold it right away. Um, Changing it up. So, yeah. I mean, he wouldn't go marchers anyway, but I felt like he was just wanted to get down there fast and uh, place a ward for, uh, like, incoming solstice ganks. Hmm, yeah, what but... is this? Pause this and like. never be too sure. Excuse me there. So, Pee Wee is heading down here on Emerald Warden with the rest of the team. Yeah. Again, hasn't leveled up anything just yet, but keep an eye if he gets the traps and, like I was talking about earlier, block some camps here. I like the fact that we don't have a hard carry or like an, a real hard carry on either team. So, yeah. I mean, even though they have a Emerald Warden, it's not necessarily sure that the Legion team has the late game. Again, it's Emerald Warden. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's yep. going to come down to the farming capability of the heroes. Uh, two very, very similar teams. I mean, Parasite versus Solstice, they are good at uh, different things, but they farm equally fast, more or less. Parasite maybe has a little bit of an advantage in the early game, but other than that, I mean, two teams that are very similar. However, I feel like Valk is uh, more of a flash farmer than Emerald Warden. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, th I think we got to start, like, saying, like, uh, not necessarily a top tier hard carry, because, you know, heroes like Valkyrie and Emerald Warden, I mean, Technically, they have hard carry potential. As you put it earlier, you know, if you if you have enough farm on any hero, frankly, I mean, you're going to be able to carry in some sort. So, 
Um, the way I look at it is that if a hero has an ability that helps scale into the late game, that skill in the late game as a result of just the more items you have. In, in, in Emma Warden's case, you know, it's cute. Like I said, it's based on his attack damage uh, plus 100 damage on top of that. So but based on his attack damage, so that's a scaling ability. The more items you have, the more inventory you have filled up to increase your attack damage, the more damage you're going to do from that Q ability. So that's one of those cases. You know, that's, that's where Valkyrie is a little, little bit different now. Her carry presence comes from being a very mobile and solo kill artist. Um, as well as, you know, oh, yeah. the ability to flash farm pretty quickly and thus get good items to eventually carry. So there's a d right, several Ken. ways to look at it. but Yeah, look at the top lane. Minus versus Emerald Warden. Emerald Warden definitely has an uh, advantage when it comes to the range and harassment. But as soon as Minus hits level 4, I feel like, I mean, Emerald Warden is very, very squishy early on. So he needs to be careful not to get stuck in a Minus combo. And on top of that, I mean, his out attack or his uh, attack damage is 52 to 56, while Minus is like a little bit higher. So uh, I think this is going to be tricky for Emerald Warden actually to get all the last hit that he wants. Yeah. Emerald Warden, you know, also a hero that definitely has potential to, to do very well against multiple heroes in the lane against him because of the Hunter's Command ability and how it's a great tool to constantly, you know, use in that laning phase for excellent harassment. And uh, um, not going to be the case here, though, but uh, the point is if there was a, another hero up here, could have taken advantage of that. But it is just the Midas, as you're pointing out, and, yeah, we'll need to be a little bit careful about that. And you see Parasites going through, going to be... He's going to take up the Alchemist Ogre here, possibly, make sure to kill it outside. Nope, he's going elsewhere. He wants a better creep, damn it. Yeah, neither team has warded up, uh, or warded up the mid lane, by the way, uh, even though there is a Solstice for the Legion side and a Hellborn, or I mean a Parasite for the Hellborn side. So I feel like if whoever goes for the kill first, or the gank attempt first, Parasite or Solstice are more or less going to result in uh, helping their team win this mid lane. And Ooh. it seems like it's going to be Parasite who wins our winner. Is he coming middle? Yep. Yeah. Minotaur, pretty good minion for this. Ooh, the stomp! Oh he second guessed himself. Okay, he does get the uh, the stomp off now. Rockets coming out of the side. They really want this kill. Four heroes are here. The stuff of Pyromancer is going to completely miss. It should still be a dead pebbles though, right? Yeah, he doesn't have mana for a chuck or anything, and they're going to chase him down. Haste rune. Was that a haste rune on Chipper? No, that was just boots. For some reason, I thought he had yeah, haste rune. It looks like the avatar yeah. is hasting forward. This is a weird avatar, soul. man. Yeah, <laughs> it's the way he, he runs. He steps. Oh, Solstice. And now Solstice in some trouble. Rocket's uh, going to dodge at least a couple right here. Eat through the trees. Doing a pretty good job is fine. And, yeah, he will survive in the end, but keeping uh, him this occupied. Great, though. I love this. I love this build by Shipper as well. Um, he has 270 GPM thanks to that first blood. I mean, he went two minor totems, some region, and then into the marchers. He's not going to be able to really contest the Valk that much, which I feel is a lineup for that day, or a, a setup that they almost should win one versus one. But as long as he keeps the pressure up and plays around the Parasite, I mean, it can work out very beautifully. Yeah. Nope. Nice rotation by Pyre, or Penny on Pyre Monster as well. That's like, this is just what DSPN needs to get into this game and mm -hmm. really be able to just knock the Legion team out. Yeah. Level 4 Midas just hit there as well, so that's what you're talking about. That's going to be a prime spot for him, but with him dying now, that buys more room for uh, PewE on Emerald Warden to have a good time. He got the assist there. He's level 5. And going to be able to work off of that. I'm sure something like an early Energizer would make sense on this hero. And, again, as far as his ultimately his build, it, it's, you know, any ranged carry, I'm sure, you know, the Fire Bane, Top. Geometer's Bane, Assassin Trout. He's going to be chased down right here. Ember Ward and one more auto attack yet gets taken out. So Mighty Marcus gets very quick revenge right there. And that's exactly what you were talking about, it, its potential uh, to get a kill on Ember Ward. And as, uh, she's not the most uh, escape-heavy hero, so... No, definitely not. No uh, levels in the overgrowth either, so not going to be able to slow down the Midas quite oh, yet. Yeah. A tip with Emerald Warden, by the way, I mean, it takes a little bit uh, of time to activate uh, overgrowth, or I mean, before it like gets activated if you throw it down on the ground. But if you actually deny the trap manually, you can activate it out or uh, e uh, immediately. So you just place the trap on the ground, and then you right-click or Q, uh, attack your own trap, then it's going to trigger. Really? Yeah. So why would well hold on why would you want to do that then? Uh, because it traps uh, or uh, I mean it takes like two seconds or something if you put down the trap on top of a oh. hero to activate 
But if Pyre Monster, for example, comes in and stuns the Midas, you can place the trap on top of Midas and then manually deny it, and then it's going to trigger really? and trap the Midas. I wonder yeah. if that's intended or not. I mean, I guess it is. It's been like that ever since the hero <laughs> came out, so I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. Not many people know about it. But How it's, dare uh, you, Stewie? I... <laughs> You're releasing <laughs> secrets. I'm sorry. No, that's good. That's 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 fantastic <laughs> advice. That's interesting. I mean, it's a hero, let, let's be honest, it's a hero that's really not played much, at least at the higher tier level, so... Um, yeah, probably one of the reasons for why yeah. uh, people don't realize. Ooh, middle lane? No. I'm gonna fall back before they are able to jump him right there. We saw Invis Solstice coming on over, but unable to make anything happen with it. So back into the jungle he goes. Emerald Warden is level 6 now, and that means Gawain, 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 whatever it is. The bird. The bird is here for Emerald Warden. Top. Able to assist, and they're going to help right here as Parasite is coming in. The leech, the face tech, I'm sure. No, he's level 5, so never mind. Sansing Shanta doing plenty. He is going to Elemental Warp away, trying to get a Golden Salvo off or maybe a Transmute, but in the end, he's actually going to be fine. As I'm rewarding, could not get back in range for another Sansing shot. Bottom lane, Valkyrie. One more auto attack, maybe one more rocket. Yeah, gets the kill. Teltuk takes out Haxer down here. Wow, how did that happen? He didn't even use his ultimate. No. Nice. Or the Tartos, for that matter. I caught the tail end of it, so I'm not even sure, yeah, how he got that low in the first place, but clearly he did. Well played. <laughs> yeah, well played by Teltuk. And indeed well played. Uh, but yeah, top lane also well played by Mighty Marcus, as able to get away there. And speaking of not being level 6, it, it's obviously very impactful in many, many cases, and Parasite's no different. He wasn't level 6 there, though, so not able to face hug for the uh, eventual kill. We now well, if we're looking at the minutes. mid lane, uh, Pebbles is actually a top farmer of this game. 300 GPM, he's gonna have his steam boots ready just about now, if he wants to. Yeah. Um, so that should prevent uh, any easy pickoffs on him at least. I mean, Parasite is still level 5, but as soon as he is level 6, you need to be careful. He's gonna go all in. No? He chucks on uh, Moraxis right there. Moraxis doesn't have the Arcane Shield. Not necessary though. That was really premature, though. I mean, Midas yeah. was coming in from behind, and if he would have just been a little bit more patient with the Stalagmites, I think they could have gotten an easy kill there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, most certainly could have had something more, but impatience does not pay off, and Moraxis is doing just fine. Guifix couldn't play a fantastic Moraxis last game. Here comes Peaky Curdy, also played a great Parasite last game. Looking to do so this game. Oof. I thought that was the opening so tricky, right there. Though, with the Moraxis, <laughs> I feel like they should, uh, like, uh, I don't know, it's so tricky to get a stun off yeah. with the Maraxis when you're right coming through those Parasite yeah. ganks. Usually when you have the Parasite ganks, you might like to have a Pebbles or a Magnus or something like that, which like, you just can target stun so easily. Now, Emerald Warden using the Hunter's Command, I'm guessing it does not spot Veiled Rot. I'm honestly not sure. Because um, I, I want to say it works against Invis. I'm not even sure on that, to be honest. Anyways, yeah, Midas so. C is going to be Oh my god, no, they're going to find Rhapsody. And actually, Rhapsody. they're going to find Rhapsody, Rhapsody, but they don't have a stop. Yeah, he's going to be fine okay. as he TPs out, but... Does it, so does it actually spot invis or no? Well, they not actually. I don't think. It does. I, I don't think it does. So I, I guess if that's the case, then yeah, never mind. It wouldn't. But that was. Uh, oh, chipper at bottom. Interesting. Oh, he's, he's gonna try it from Double the damage target. chipper. Uh oh. Valkyrie. He's already used the Tartos not though, because he thought that Valk was gonna go into uh, the woods. Uh, he's gonna try to get him to leap right here in a direction of his advantage. There's a rocket. First one hits. Second one hits. He takes an arrow. Rhapsody coming in, and that'll be enough to scare my fall. Oh, almost caught Rhapsody. That rocket, there's no way that one connects. Nice yeah, try. It's going to survive. Yeah, that was, that was close, but you see uh, the forgotten on Rhapsody. Haste through on Pebbles, and Minos is behind. Maybe they're more lucky this time. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, let's see the patience pace off here or not. Nope, met, then nope, this is going to be bad. <laughs> here oh comes the face. Uh, face suck, I'm sure. Yeah, gonna be. Oh, we got the Slagmans up front off the bat, though. Talk about prime time right there. Will they capitalize? Parasite goes down. Midas able to get away right there. And now Moraxis. He's getting fairly low, so is Pebbles, but he has a haste rune. Gonna be fine. Wow. I mean, that was obviously just luck as far as the perfect timing goes, but still impressive oh, yeah. nonetheless. And he stays alive. Big kill for the Legion team. That's uh, definitely what I need at this point to stop the Hellborn team from snowballing. It's very important that this uh, Parasite doesn't take off so that he can get to, to the solo kill stage. You see Midas actually now coming to the top lane on top of that. 
I'm gonna continue to pick Minus up farm up here. really sacrificed a lot though for getting those kills in the mid. I mean, he's giving Pui on Emerald Warden free farm. Maybe they feel like it's not a big deal because, you know, it is an Emerald Warden after all, but... Midas at the same time, he, he needs levels and he needs some farms so that he can get full key. He's only 180 GPM. Yeah. That's true, yeah. I figured it would have actually been doing a little bit better here, but... I mean, yeah, it definitely was struggling earlier on. Uh, I ganked here several times. Obviously, one, two, and one hero kill farm, so... Stat line there. He's trying to pick things up. Chaltuk got an uh, invis rune at the bot, but I think that hacks run are well aware. Hmm. Yeah, it's or a bot. should be there. well aware of, at least. I mean, it's not always that you look into someone's inventory, but hopefully, as. Yeah, you'd figure that they probably at least clicked on him once or twice here and noticed that. And they, he actually just even got a veiled rot delivered, so I know that as well, I'm sure. Parasite coming in with a veiled rot. So that's for good use because you see the ward of sight there. It's gonna run into him it's though. It's gonna run this into him. The off. disjoint. Nice job. Great job by Haxman reacting right there. Parasite gonna take over the Vagamol later before too much. It is nighttime now, of course. So Solstice in that night version. He has that fear effect on his ulti. He may need to use it right here. He's not gonna be able to get time though. However, now oh, Valkyrie looking to run under Chipper. You see Rhapsody. Cutting them off. She already used her staccato stuns, though, and the invis is actually going to be enough to get away. And meanwhile, over here, though, they will pick off Parasite as they cut him off. But the invis chipper, unless Midas just randomly guesses. That would be crazy, but <laughs> there's no way that's going to happen, right? So chipper going to be fine, hopefully, for his sake. <laughs> or he's going to stick around and possibly set something up here as both Pyromancer. They're going to bait it in the mid, I think. They want to go from Roxas. Yeah, we go. yeah they do. There we go. Chipper coming in. He doesn't have his ultimate, though. The Tartos oh, comes out, but nothing else. Yeah, without his Dragon ulti. Fire missed as well. That's unfortunate, man. More axes gets taken out. You do see Chipper trying to run away. Pebbles is chasing, but not going to happen in the end. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a little awkward <laughs> as far as the execution there. Well, Hacks are in here in the middle lane now. I'm not sure why he's transitioning to here. He, maybe he feels a little bit uh, forced almost because it's not going very well for him. 240 GPM only versus this shipper at the bot lane. Yeah. Emerald Warden, he actually gets a warp cleft here, so is going to be going to Thunderclaw. Wow, Pebbles Lord has a portal key, by the way. Is he rare? Oh, yeah, it's being delivered to him. Jeez. Coming out there. Uh, Marax is not getting close <laughs> to his. Oh my Parasite god, finds him. That he's getting initiated. Can Marax get close enough though? Nice combo coming out to stall them and Rhapsody even assisting slightly to slow them down. But actually, no, she's in trouble. <laughs> Marax, th those axes, dude, they add up as far as the slow, man. Level four. Oh, yeah. It's going to slow you down pretty efficiently right there. So, yeah, stacking minus 15%. Uh, maximum of uh, four axes, so. That's quite a bit. Up, Something yeah. to take into uh, consideration as well in this game compared to the last one is that Parasite is having a uh, much worse time in this game than the last one. I think he was up at 350 GPM or something at uh, the same time last game. Now he's at 200 GPM, so he's not really going to get that snowball effect that he's looking for. And, uh, I mean, Warden up here at the top lane, I mean, it looks like he's going for Funiclo. So, I mean, I guess Funiclo actually like allows you to get that or like flash farm ability a little bit at mm -hmm. least. So. Uh, looking to transition into the late game, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, that's a good point. I mean, definitely not a uh, natural farming carry, as as that uh, as that's concerning. You know, doesn't have that ability to farm some creeps in the jungle, the stack creeps especially. But yeah, Thunderclaw changes everything, and that's what helps make it actually a pretty significant item for your carry potential hero. Now he's going to be jumped right here, and <laughs> no chance. And he doesn't have Mystic Vestments. Only has a Steam Boots, as far as. Helpful stats there, so that's concerning. I guess a minor totem, but yeah, that showed. <laughs> Pebbles just easily takes him out with a combo. Yeah, that's a good find. And, you know, I was going to make a point, too. I mean, you see the traps that are out from number one. It's, it's great for vision and making sure that he's fine, but right there, that was just a good job by Pebbles getting the position to be able to jump in with the portal key, so. Oh, yeah, and he's looking to go towards the mid here and maybe finding a kill on Braxis. I mean, Pebbles' combina combination this early into the game is just so crucial. It's almost like 80% of the HP, uh, no matter what hero it is. So if he has just one player more with him, it's going to be a, a secure kill for sure. Mm -hmm. Panny saw. is uh, sensing something, though, so he's sitting behind him, Braxis, but I mean, I'm not sure if he's going to be enough. Well, they, they saw if... Pebbles coming over the ward of side, so they have an idea. Oh, right. He it was, was just here. placed, though. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, no, it was because I noticed it while he was running on over, so. All right. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, so they had they have an idea. That's why they're kind of setting up. But in the end, nothing's going to really come of it. As we see, Parasite's coming down to the bottom lane with a Veiled Rot. Um, double stack Ancients in the meantime, but it's going to see if they can make a play down here on a Valkyrie, perhaps. But again, Haxion has already shown he can react pretty quickly here. Ooh, he's going to go with the flank. It's a good decision. Pebbles is here, so they need to be fast with Yeah, this. they do. Here comes the burst. This is going to be quick enough. Pebbles comes in, so they get the counter Valkyrie. And Pebbles is going to start running back. Solstice channels up his ulti, but he missed. He missed completely. He is going to get the charge on Pyromancer. It is daytime. Stun is applied, but it doesn't matter. And they all get away in the end, so. Very nice kill for the Hellborn team. Uh, if that would have, I mean, if Pebbles would have been a split second or a little bit closer and actually would have been able to get the Stalagmites off, I mean, that would have been, like, big backfire for the Hellborn team. Yeah. Crucial kill almost, but... Uh... They are going to get it, and I like I got to point out as well that those force heroes that the Legion team has been picking up or Team Grief has been picking up are like I they just haven't paid off whatsoever. I mean, this game is with the Solstice, which felt a little bit iffy because they were up versus some Raxus, they already knew that. And usually, you want to, to have Solstice for early kills in the mid. And last game, it was the Cthulhuant, and it was similar uh, impact in that game, close to nothing. So uh, I would have rather preferred uh, like a support, additional support for the Valk and just have hacks around 400 plus GPM at this point instead of mm -hmm. having the Solstice, you know, in the forest. Yeah, well, Axran unfortunately, again, uh, not doing the best here, continuing to be that way. And not often, Axran definitely known as one of the stronger carries, uh, especially in his time on the scene. It's definitely not been the most active, of course, as of late, but is back here and uh, for this event, but on the verge of, uh, again, you lose here. You are not qualifying for the Dead Eye Bounty League, but again, to reiterate and stress on that, it's just because you don't qualify for the Dead Eye Bounty League doesn't mean there's no point to play. In fact, there's still a very big point because the Dream Act qualifiers are going to be starting up next weekend, obviously. So, uh, something to look forward to there. And uh, while we are on this pause and on the subject of Dream Hack, go ahead and. Uh, Interesting yep. topic. This as well. Oh, no, let me pause that. <laughs> Um, this website, in case you haven't checked it out yet, guys, heroesandheroes.com slash 8-bit. It's an awesome website. Um, you can actually uh, check it out yourself and have fun with it. But basically, it kind of goes over the new 8-bit Avatar series and actually how funding of the DreamHack event, as far as price pool whatnot, is going to come from this Avatar set right here. So definitely check it out and have some fun with that. But uh, again, heroesandheroes.com slash 8-bit. But looks like we are good to go. Yeah, That's as far as I've understood yeah. as well with the Dream, like it's going to be one team decided uh, each qualifier, right? Yeah. So it's like going to be periodically. So yep. um, all right. So when are we going to have our first Dream Hack team set up? Uh, I believe it's going to – I think the first one's next weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. The, the full right. schedule that, that, is on Hunter.com, so. I mean, whatever team gets that spot, I mean, they're just going to be able to, you know, relax, and, you know, like tease yeah. everyone else for – Every, uh, yeah, all the way to until June. Well, ideally, you know, the teams that qualify at least initially are going to also be in the Deadeye Bounty League, so they will be having yeah, other matches. Just be but... like, you know, even if they lose, they're just going to be like, ah, oh, yeah. we got Dream Hack, you know, you know, we're yeah. just trolling. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that next, next mm -hmm. weekend in that case, Dream Hack qualifier, especially the first one. Yeah. Everyone wants to prove themselves. Everyone wants to be ready for it. I mean, I know this uh, tournament is important as well, but I mean, next one is definitely. I mean, that's when the top teams are going to be playing towards each or uh, versus each other, and we're going to see BMG and Sync getting back into it as well. And it's going to yeah. be so interesting if they have like taken up new strategies and stuff from uh, Thailand, for example. I can't wait for oh, it, man. Boy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. No. We need to see a jump here. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Pebbles missed uh, the combo on the Pyre Monster, and uh, as a result, he lived. And at the same time, Maraxis jumps in and just falls short by a split yeah. second. Pebbles being able to port out. Oh, that's pretty I think he had an Invis rune and missed his combo on a Pyro. Yeah, not able to capitalize there. Ooh, Glowstone already on Chipper now. So he's trying to get that Staff of the Master right away here. As far as his first item. Passing up items like tablet or portal key, things like that. Speaking of portal key, uh, Solstice just got his own portal key, actually. Really? He's going for the portal key? Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. I mean, this was <laughs> exactly the same as last game as well. Ketulafan getting a portal key, accomplishing nothing, just making himself a target. I, If they're looking to go offensive, yes, sure, go for it. But I really want to see them go offensive in that case. Yeah. <clears throat> 
and a whole lot of that. Chipper, you see, he activates the focus buffer. Uh, great ability there again. Not only does it now increase uh, magic damage take, or no, it absorbs, not <laughs> increases. It absorbs magic damage that is coming your way, but it also now uh, regenerates mana back. It, I think it's like 25% of the damage done or something like that. Receives mana equal to half the damage, so it's even more than that. Um, so basically, it's a nice little tool to also help uh, get some mana back and also want to There's apply a lot others. of players here that are going to jump in. Oh, shit. Yeah, back to the bottom lane down here. Midas, he jumped in first. Kind of play on him, though. Didn't come the chainsaw, so he gets taken out. Now, Solstice is taking some good damage as well. He's trying to fall back, protect the melody. We'll save some initial damage, but they're going to quickly turn to Rhapsody and get her killed. And they will pick off Solstice in the end, and it could be more. Double tap already for Teltuk. And they want more on a Valkyrie. They'll get more on a Valkyrie right there. Big response, Emerald Ward importing in at the perfect time and getting involved oh, here early to the PUE, and now they're going to push this bottom tower. These strategies are actually paying off for the SBN. They're yeah. making it work. Freaking Emerald Ward and 350 GPM now, and they're looking to take game number three. I'm not sure where Pebbles was during that uh, period of time. I guess it was top with no mana, but... Oh damn, that Parasite is sneaking in, or is hiding in between, just baiting that uh, jump from uh, the Midas. It, w it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well played on uh, several different levels there for DSPN, and it's kind of going to be the tower push on top of that, of course. So. Look at GPM, a Haxner's GPM right now on Valk. Yeah, it's not impressive, and you know, again, it's this... safe play on Valk. Yeah, the, it, it goes back to... Relying on a carry Valkyrie, I, ju I just don't, I don't know. I, I just never really felt like it's the best option. I know we have been seeing it uh, here and there lately, and it definitely has worked, but... Um, and we go in a mid. Not working here. Yeah, middle lane, more axis. <laughs> I mean, when four heroes jump on you, two of them have portal keys, not much you can do, I guess. Uh, still, I mean, everyone missing on a the map. They have a ward down in the enemy forest they are for, or they know for sure that no one is farming. So I still would say that you should be cautious. As the Maraxis in that case. I mean, there's only so many places they can be if they're not in their own forest and they're not on your side of the map. I mean, it's either actions or trying to set up a gank. That's true, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, could have had the hindsight there, or the insight more so, but in the end... He did not, and he gets jumped, so uh, the lead, a uh, 3,400 uh, goal lead, 3,700 experience lead here for DSPN still remains. And I'm curious to see where Emma Warden goes once again. Like I was talking about earlier, I mean, the idea of a uh, right-click, just ranged carry, like I said, the Geometer's Bane, an Assassin Trout I know has potential to be decent on her. Um, and we'll see. He picked up a Quick Blade. Yeah, so probably a Firebrand, I would guess. Yeah, I wouldn't. Mm, yeah, I guess he needs to prioritize his farm or increase his damage, but I mean, if Pebbles finds him, I mean, he is still dead. Yeah. That's true, so yeah, I would have rather seen more of a... I guess even... Well, he does have a Mystic Vestments at least, so... I'm He's not sure if that's that, enough, but... though. I don't think it is. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> but with Pebbles level 12, no. Ultimate level 2, I mean, it's just gonna hit him. Uh, I mean, what, what, so what, like prioritize it, or maybe get a Mighty Blade for an eventual Shrunken Head, I guess you can argue, but. Yep. Take a, um, take a note from Haxorn's book, so to say. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you can see Haxorn, he has his own Thunderclaw now, but he's still well behind in farm, so once again, attempting to recover here. Tablet finished on uh, Massera, playing the Pebbles, again, 5.0. Uh, here we go, stat line on him, and he's looking for an opportunity bottom lane. See if he decides to go up and focus buffer on Chipper. It's only level one, I think. Uh, oh, it's level two actually, so it absorbs 250 magic damage. Yeah, he's too. The tanky. Chipper got yeah focus buffer plus 400 plus HP from yeah Emerald Ward. I mean, comparison. So this is never gonna work. I mean, they need one more down here if this is gonna be. Yeah, you kind of wonder why he's waiting around so much because <laughs> there's no way he's solo killing himself. So definitely not. Ooh, Alchemist Bones on Solstice follows up the portal key with that. I guess it's versus the parasite. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's all right. I mean, it's gonna help them evolve into the or transition into the. Wait, what? What? What's up? So How did he just kill him on his own? Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind I caught that halfway through. He just, I, I'm, I want to say Solstice was already a little low on life for whatever reason. Maybe Tank of the Creep Wave or something, but. That's what it felt like, at least. But, I mean, he does have Lex, I guess. And, you know, we talked about how strong that item wow. could be on him, so. 
I can't believe he was able to pull that gank yeah. off, even though he hasn't had the most success in this game. I mean, 300 GPM, he doesn't really, I mean, he has 2.5k more or less in the bank, hasn't got an item yet, and he's still able to get a kill on a strength hero like yeah. Midas. See Chipper, he has a staff now. And that's uh, that's definitely a big item. Ooh, that's a Illusion Pebbles. You think they're going to realize that? Yeah. <laughs> But it kind of just stands there. Oh my god, next level, please! Are you serious? And actually, he's going to jump in on top of that, but now he's getting a good response on him. Protector Melody off to the side. It's not a range of Valkyrie. The Valkyrie big burst. He will survive in the long run, though. Chipper, he's trying to fall back. He will be fine. Emerald Warden putting in the auto attacks and will take out Solstice. And now Pebbles comes back in, but that's definitely not going to work. He goes down to auto attacks. And the Chainsaw's eventually coming out. Legion Team's still share. sticking around. It's not going to be enough, though. They'll be forced to fall back from that. So uh, they did get the kill on the Pyromancer, but clearly a victory for DSP in there. Yeah. Emerald yeah, Warden definitely Hellboard showing. Team doing it again. Yeah. Oh, boy. Minus wasn't there. I mean, this is the second time, though, they are forced to take a fight down there. and uh, Or maybe it, it's more of an impulse, I think, that they are uh, you know, actually deciding to take these games. They're like, okay, go for it. I mean, it doesn't seem like the rest of his team are actually behind. Yeah. But uh, they have been four versus five every single time. Not I don't. Really, I know. They, I don't, they weren't forced to do that. I mean, they just picked up an alchemist bones and solstice. I mean, they can easily sit back and farm, and uh, just hope for the best, so to say, or like punish, or let the Hellborn team be the ones to uh, make the move. But uh, I mean, they got a tower. I mean, that was a real nice toss on with your illusion, like throwing in your illusions to get the tower. I mean, next level, so to say. But yeah, no, you're right. That that was actually very well played by Vesir, definitely. But obviously, the big picture, it's oh. Jump. Not going to work out in the end as, yep, yeah, they will jump Rhapsody. And actually, Pebbles also, but no, he tablets over the ledge. Going to be fine for the time being. And Solstice, it's currently nighttime for him. So, like Stress has that fear effect on his ultimate if he finds an opportunity for it, but. Also going the Alchemist Bones, more of a counter to Parasite, if anything. Jump on a chipper again, he's tanky, especially with the focus buffer, but when there's that much That's coming a big at streak. you. That's uh, savage that. sick. Yeah, fine is uh, oh that stopped the streak. Yeah, now 469 gold bonus, nice for Solstice right there. So um, he doesn't have a buyback. Not that, that really matters. Not gonna really capitalize off of this, but neither team really has any heroes that can uh, take Conger too easily. <laughs> you know what? More Axis is going to Spell Sunder again, and this is definitely huh. more of an even game. So it really does. Pretty much <laughs> make the point that uh, that was definitely more of a serious pickup. And, and like you said, it is stacks with the more Axis ability. And so it's the idea that they have a, a larger life pool that would be even extra efficient. Uh, yeah, if there is one hero in the game that you should really pick it up, it's either Moraxis or the Thunderbringer, more or less, because they are the ones who have uh, these small magic spells. Yeah, Electrician, too. Yeah, true. In. Um, yeah. Bombardier, maybe as well. I'm looking at all the skills, yeah, just to clarify, and yeah, it is all magic, so. I mean, I guess, yeah, really, it it does, it's really not a bad option, I guess, in the end, uh, for this guy. Uh, do we see, by the way, we got Parasite with 3.8k, I mean, that's enough for that Shroud of his, if he yeah. tends to go for that, but so far, I mean, I feel like if he would have want to go for the Shroud, then he would have picked it up immediately. Uh -huh. There's really no point in, you know, waiting with that. Yeah, it's that always that fun point of, oh, what is he going to get? What is he going to get? Chipper, middle lane, field rot. He's in a pretty good position now. I don't think they know Valkyrie's here. He's going to open on the Solstice. See if bait anything out. Off to the side. Pebbles picks out Pyromancer, but at what cost over here? More access jumps in. Pebbles at half-life. The rocket's going to miss initially. Emerald Warden trying to get close enough. It looks like he will. Oh, a nice protect MLD. It's going to be stopped, though. But it buys time for the turnaround. Solstice jumps in. Gets the one kill on more access. They go. Pebbles goes back in. He does fall, but he helps to kill Emerald Warden. And Chipper is going to be enough distance to fall back and be fine. So, wow, what a man up by Pebbles there at the end, too. <laughs> To go back Very in. beautiful sauces ultimate on top of that as well, hitting yeah. four people, I think. Yeah, no, that was that was a very well placed ultimate. And again, being nighttime to the fear effect on top of that. Oh yeah. And Staff is finished, by the way, or it was finished on the shipper. Yeah. And it's what? Had that wait, for a wait, wait, bit here. wait. What's up? Parasite going for BKB? He went shrunk and interesting. Really? What? what? I don't 
And this again, Sienna, the, Reese, but yeah, is there is that the best use of 3,900 gold? I mean, I, I honestly think I would have rather seen an assassin shot at this point. Oh yeah. yeah, much rather. I mean, now we know it works, so to say. Yeah. Uh, and we, I mean, they've shown it over and over again. I mean, by picking up Midas, even without even like by just having that like Stallione, so why not go for Shroud? Yeah. It could be. I mean. No, I agree with you. It seems like a very odd pickup, but they're gonna find Valkyrie right here. And I mean, BKB or not, I mean that's a <laughs> that's a dead Valkyrie. So good find. Yeah, maybe he feels like he's like he doesn't want to go Codex because it doesn't transition very well into the late game, and he feels like this is going to be a long game, so to say. We're not going to be able to break the base of our opponents for quite some time. And at the same time, I mean, uh, Solstice also has that uh, Alchemist bones of his, so he's like, okay, maybe Puzzle Box isn't the best of choice either. But I feel like Puzzle Box is so much more though than just a team fight and mana burn item. It's all about map control as well because it counters all the wards of your opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh. Very, very strong. I think again, ever since they made the change to level one and two as well to work against counter wards and whatnot, and or being able to counter ward is another reason why it's definitely something to invest into. But yeah, I think you're already feeling it necessary to pick up a full shrunken head here instead with that gold. We'll see what kind of impact that does have. I mean, obviously that gold of Valkyrie at the bottom lane, really, no matter what item he had there, it wouldn't have mattered. But will it pay off in future more fights? Axis. More Axis. Yeah, they were looking to jump him, but I don't think they're going to get there in time. I don't know why they give this Rhapsody a uh, Veiled Rot and then, like, run in with the rest of the team yeah. visible. <laughs> it's like, I, this, oh, Rhapsody's not there, guys. Let's jump. I mean, they're not going to be doing that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's only the Pebbles, guys. Let's uh, let's bait it. But, uh, nah, I don't know. They should give it to Pebbles if someone. Yeah. And again, nothing really comes of it. And now it's buying some time. Valkyrie, by the way, has finished, or more so Emerald Warden has finished the Frostburn here. On Pee Wee playing it, so again to go in just more of the combat style. Yeah, a little style bit here. more uh, tanky now, at least. He yeah. wouldn't drop to a Pebbles combo. And I mean, this is one of the things with Pebbles as well. I mean, he is going to taper off while Maraxxus is more or less going to grow stronger and stronger. I'm not sure if I should necessarily say that Maraxxus is a better late game hero than Pebbles, but I feel like in this particular game, he's going to be of more use than the Pebbles. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Ooh, Pebbles scouting it out. That's an invis rune. Jumps on a Maraxxus right here. Combo from Midas in the arrow to guarantee the kill. So good execution between the three heroes right there. And Maraxxus, he doesn't have a buyback. So this should easily be a free secondary tower for uh, Team Grief over here. And yeah, I would assume like so. It's going to be the case. So get a nice tower cut out of this. Obviously counter pushing happening. Chipper is going to go ahead and try to push in the top lane. You got Parasite working on the bottom lane down here. The Will they go further is the question. Mm, I would Probably really not. like for them to take this opportunity to play some offensive wards. And it seems like, yeah, that's pretty much what they're planning to do here. Or Forgotten One is in the enemy force at least. I would hope that he's playing some wards. Yeah, Oof. one that goes down at least. That ref ward is just out of range of the ward. Aside, oh, so. damn, I didn't even see it. So yeah. sneaky hidden. Yeah, and behind the statue there, so... I wonder for, if that was planned, him. you know, like intentional, that mm -hmm. he knows for a fact that Rev Ward is just out of range if he were to place one there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, maybe got to give uh, give him credit in that sense and uh, uh, figure that if there were to counter ward of where it would be and thus place it uh, just out of range of it. So still get the vision of the area is the, the idea there. Got him reward and putting down some traps, you know, again, a very powerful tool to help keep her alive. In cases like this, where she's just trying to get some free farm, so you know it hasn't been as active as he was with the Swift Blade uh, game by any means, but and the whole team for that matter, it's it's been. I mean, the last game though was just a very rapid game by them, and eventually snowballed out of control. So, yeah. what surprises me is that the Hellborn team they're like they're just sitting back, they're just waiting for this. They they feel confident in actually taking this into the late game because otherwise they would like try to get more ganks off or try to get control over the enemy force. But they're you know Pewie has more or less just been sitting in his own force this entire game, mm -hmm. uh, with a few exceptions of porting down to the bottom to aid his team. But other than that, I mean they're just Legion team are the ones that are uh, putting up the or picking the pace. Oh my! Well, actually, Pebbles. okay. Yeah, Parasite jumps in. He has got the shrunken head. Remember, and Chipper follows it with the chainsaw, slowing them down heavily, doing some good damage. Rhapsody also going to be in trouble, and she eventually will get picked off. So, a complete spread here by Team Grief. 
Really trying to make sure that nobody else gets caught out, and I think that'll be the it, unless... No, he's not going to go further, but Congor is looking appealing now. Oh, yeah. Selborne team, and going to easily do it here. So, yeah, that was a case of Team Grief was thought they had a chance to make a move right there. They're moving together, and it could have, but, I mean, in the end, it just didn't uh, didn't connect there. I don't think they are the ones which should be offensive. I mean, Pebble's combination is already tapered off, so has Midas, and unless they like find someone really off position, I mean, taking a team fight is really damn risky at this point. Yeah. Morax, by the way, does his axes stack on like percentage-wise on Congo? I I don't even know. Don't know. <laughs> I don't think so, but oh, well, what well, what do you mean by percentage-wise? Like no, but like it takes uh. Let's oh, the, the damage of deals. Max health and magic damage. Yeah. I guess it I, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe it does, actually. I don't know. In that case, it's quite effective, actually, yeah. versus Congor. Yeah, it would be very powerful. Middle lane, tower is just about dead, and it's going to die in favor of the Hellborn Sidia person inside the Melissa there to assist with that. So, yeah. you know, not like. Kurt is really, you know, playing well this game. Even though, I mean, he went for a little mm -hmm. bit of a weird item. I mean, it's working out for him so far. I mean, so props for him for. I guess going his own style, so to say, not being afraid of, you know, mm -hmm. um, is doing his thing. As we yeah. saw in both game number two and here in game number three. Pebbles, who got a little too close for comfort, does eventually fall back, though, but a yeah, very scary spot to be in. 3,500 gold saved up on Emerald Warden. Again, he just got the token of life, and there's the assassin trout on Parasite. So, <laughs> so now first. he's getting it down, right? Now, yeah, of course. This makes sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So yeah, now he's going to be able to uh, shroud in, get a pick off, uh, activate the BKB and TP out without yeah. helmet or leading He wants to be Swiss Blade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that's the capability, and you see right there, all we heard right there, Raptor gets picked off. Enough. Chipper. I don't think so. Focus buffer is up. It's not, and Moraxis jumps in as well. Now Midas the one in trouble, being chased down. They will eventually get Chipper in the background. Here comes the Assassin's Child. Parasite, though. Dust is going to be used, and there's Electalios on the Valkyrie. She splits up, though. Well played. Trying to get away, and I think she will. Moraxis, he takes a combo. He's going to survive, though. Morax, or Parasite going in with the Shurken Head now popped. But Moraxis is taking out. Look at Parasite. He's blocked Parasite by the creeps. Blocked. Oh, no. And now he's still trying to run away. He has Ghost Marchers. He actually had Ghost Marchers already, I'm pretty sure, there, too. It just wasn't using it. But anyways... Uh, it's not uh, the biggest deal in the world, and they did eventually kill Solstice, it looks like. Off to the side. It was one for free, okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, that wasn't too bad at all for, for Team Grief there. I mean, still the, they have the token of life on Emerald Warden, but... Yeah. Okay, free for two, it actually was uh, Rhapsody went down right before the fight started as well. Yeah. I, uh... I don't know, man. I mean, th th this Parasite build, uh, like that last fight, like it, it did nothing, I felt like, as far as having yeah, an impact definitely. compared to... It was really well played by Haxor as well. It's actually like splitting off or taking off the silence with that uh, geometers of him. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't know. BKB, I mean, he was blocked as well, and the Hellborn team, I mean, they did uh, split up. I mean, some of them went for the uh, targets on the left side while Parasite was chasing off their Valk, so if they would have just coordinated it or communicated a little bit better, I feel like they could have gotten at least one more kill out of that, but mm -hmm. you know, you got to ask yourself, I mean, is Shroud and BKB really the best option, or I think one of them would have been enough, I'm not sure if both defensive items are. Yeah, that too, and, you know, hell, I, I, I would have... I... It's like a soul's bulwark. I think they could still use him in the Selborne side, and and maybe that would have yeah, been a true. better option here. And ooh, front lines. You look at the Parasite, the Assassin Child, though. He's gonna try try to get a good opening right here. He portal key. Okay, it goes on a Valkyrie, but she leaps away after the split, and she's doing a very good job of that. And actually, I'm gonna be fine in the end. But uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> 3,900 gold for the Shrunken, 3,300 gold for the Assassin Trout. You know, basically could have had a puzzle box as well as almost a Hellflower here. And so it's like you kind of ask yourself, really, <laughs> what's more impactful? What what could be more impactful? But I mean, like I mean, you pointed out, I mean, a now as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the Parasite, we kind of indicates that they want to tr uh, counter enemy wards, and I mean, puzzle box would have been perfect for that uh, reason alone. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it's, it, it, you know, Zibbe, we've definitely given him crap in the past for that or, like, criticized or more so just brought it up and, like, Theory Council's like, what is he thinking? But, you know, he said he sticks to his guns and he does it and he has his reasons for it. I mean, picking Curdy the same way, clearly. <laughs> he has his reasons and uh, comfortable with it, so I'm going to stick with it here. And 
See how oh, yeah, it ships works take out. on Minos, by the way, in before this fight. This might be crucial if the Hellboard team doesn't That's pay big, attention yeah. to it. Get some off guard. I see the Veldra, they're collapsing in. We have a big fight brewing right here. Emerald oh, Warden yeah. in the front lines. Has a token still for another 27 seconds. Not the longest. Pebbles, he eventually will go in. Valkyrie Prince is going to be his side. Might miss completely. That could backfire big time. Tricking it up on Emerald Warden. She's planning with the auto attacks. And well, Rhapsody Disco, or the uh, Protected Melody, it's going to be stopped though pretty quickly. She does end up falling. She still goes down. Emerald Warden just sitting in the background, just right clicking, and gets a double tap out of it. Moraxis chases down Midas and the Hellborn team. They win that fight decisively, and they get the tower on top the of token. that. They did not even lose the token, and almost would have been for the better for the Hellborn team if they did, to be honest, but <laughs> I guess they win the fight. That's what matters, and now they're going to start pushing in here into the base. But, yeah, I mean, that the field initiation, really, I mean, they had a good chance. The Veiled Ra, they had the Valkyrie Prism. Pebbles, though, he missed the Stalagmites, and he went for the combo. Uh, on two yeah, heroes, and he missed everyone. Uh, yeah, Solstice already started off channeling his ultimate as well. He was expecting the Pebble Stunt to land. Now when it didn't, both of them failed. Wow. I don't know about that now. It's game number three. Really? What? Yeah. See, now that's what I'm on. I'm with you of... Really? <laughs> with game, like, game number, number three, two, yeah, this is right, it. Now, it's, 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 you know, and... But, well, frustration, clearly. DSBN get into oh, them and take the victory in the end. Congratulations to DSBN, and they'll be the eighth and final team going to be advancing <laughs> I, on. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I did not think the DSBN were going to be able to take, off, uh, take out uh, Team Grief, like, by miles. Like, yeah. I felt like Team Grief were looking so damn good. But, well, DSBN really showing. I mean, like, making a statement here. That they are here to stay, and they are ready, and they want to compete uh, not only in the Dead Bounty League, but for that uh, Dream Act placement, which is uh, probably the main reason for why they, you know, form your team and start. So they're looking good. Yeah, I got this uh, instant replay of the last fight right here up right now, and yeah, that miss in the stalagmites, man, that is brutal. Yeah, you, saw, you mentioned Solstice too. It, it, because of the missed stalagmite, Solstice then his ulti completely whiffed, and if you have a jump like that, I mean, it's not going to look pretty in the end. So, and yeah, you just see DSPN running through them after the fact as the damage was done. So. Team Disband is what I'm being told is what it actually stands for. Just let me click yeah. on it. Yeah, Team Disband. Name, right? uh, DSBN. They are victorious, and they take the series two games to one. So once again, our eight teams are set for the $20,000 Deadeye Bounty League. Going to be starting this week, actually. We'll have more information on all of that uh, with a portal launch tomorrow. That's going to be happening and keeping you updated on that. So... That's going to be some exciting stuff. Congratulations to all the teams, and uh, definitely had a lot of fun this weekend. You got to see a lot of new teams in action. Definitely some old school players coming back. Always fun, and and overall just a just a good weekend of Heroes of New Earth, and and it's good to be back as uh, to top it all off. So, uh, big time, Snowy. Yeah, I want to first off say thank you for for co-casting, and also uh, final thoughts on this weekend, this today, and in general here. I think this weekend was really interesting, actually. Uh, first day, we didn't really see too many like surprise victories. Everything more or less went as it should, uh, depending on the team ranks. But today, I mean, first of all, here, the team disband taking out uh, uh, Team Grief. Solera Club taking out uh, Undercover Hoon Agents. So, I mean, there's definitely signs of like new teams up and rising. I mean, the competitive scene is on its way back. I mean, it's growing once again, stronger than ever. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward for the next uh, coming weekends here yeah. with the Dead Bounty and the Dream Act modifiers. Do you have the eight teams, by the way? Or uh... Uh, Here, yeah. Let me uh, list them off here. Okay, so it's going to be – so Bad Monkey Gaming and Zinke Esports, they automatically qualified, of course, for, for obvious reasons. Uh, no Stone Gaming, Team Who, Fresh, and Reason Gaming – and then it's going to be Solaire Club and DSBN, as we just saw. So those will be the eight teams that are going to be coming at you. And, yeah, overall, definitely a lot of potential there to have some very entertaining best-of-five series that's going to be happening. So, um, yeah, you know, I talked about it earlier this weekend, too. Yesterday, I believe it was, you know, talking about just how every single offseason we, we, we find new teams – that uh, kind of just seemed to come out of nowhere. And by, by, by six months later, it's just like they're a team that was great all along. We just kind of forget that they, <laughs> we didn't know about these guys <laughs> six months ago. Again, BMG, the, the latest example of that. 
uh, formerly known as Willow Keeper. Haunter Season 3 going into it, no one would have expected them to be the world's final champions. And sure enough, they were in the end. So uh, we, we 